In this video, I'll be going through the 48 laws of power, and today I'll be covering law number 34, 35, and 36. Law number 34 says, be royal in your own fashion. Act like a king to be treated like one. The way people treat you is a direct reflection of the way you treat yourself. If you disrespect yourself, then rest assured, other people will disrespect you. Likewise, if you respect yourself, and act with dignity and with class, then those around you will hold you in high regard. An application of this law, which I see time and time again, is appearance. Have you ever been slightly overdressed for an event? Whenever that happens, people may give you an interesting look or think you've tried slightly too hard, but it's never a true liability. Compare this to being underdressed for an event you feel much worse. It gives the impression that you have completely misunderstood the occasion. And it's embarrassing. I've actually seen people decide to leave events because they have been underdressed. Likewise, there are times when I'm going out with my friends to have a nice, chilled, relaxed day. So I'll wear something like a hoodie, a pair of shorts, and some slide on sandals. All of us will be dressed like this and people will treat us like ordinary citizens. In the worst cases, some people would even try and avoid us, which is fine, it's not a surprise. Most people don't leave their house hoping to encounter a group of hooded black men. On the other hand, when me and the same group of people are attending something more serious and something more distinguished, we wear high quality suits with pristine haircuts now Instead of looks of disapproval, fear, or apprehension, we receive looks of admiration, awe, and even reverence. When this happens, we have not changed, but the way we carry ourselves has changed. We are royal in our own fashion. We act like kings, and as a result, we are treated like kings. This principle goes beyond appearance. It applies for a bunch of other stuff. For example, if you've lent some people money and you're not getting it back and you continue to let this slide, people will have no sense of urgency when they are in debt to you. Or if people are repeatedly late when you arrange meetings and you act like it's okay, then people will not respect your time. There are endless other examples. The key here is to be careful what you tolerate. You are teaching people how to treat you. Hold yourself to a high standard and act as though you are destined for greatness. And you shouldn't just act like it, but truly believe it. Once you do this, you will find that people treat you in a way that reflects that. You will exude confidence, you will radiate dignity, and you will command respect. By the way, one of the most important traits when it comes to acting like a king is discipline. I have written a 30-page ebook which has detailed steps on how you can achieve discipline. The link is in the description and I'm giving away the first chapter completely for free. Law number 35 says, master the art of timing. In life, you must know when to pick your moment. You could do something amazing, something spectacular, something sensational even, but if you do it at the wrong time, your best efforts could completely backfire. For many things in life, it's not what you do that really matters, but it's when you do it. An example of this law that many of us can relate to is when we are getting to know someone and we can feel that feelings are beginning to develop. If you really want to have a good shot at escalating things, you know how dangerous it can be to make your feelings known when it's too early. If it's too early, you could come across too eager too desperate and slightly weird. On the other hand, taking too long before making a definitive statement about your feelings can make it seem as though you are not serious and the other person may simply move on. If this has ever happened to you, then you know how disappointing it can be when you have failed to choose the right moment. Another example of mastering the art of timing is knowing when to say, I told you so. When I was younger, I had a bike stolen. Before I left, my dad told me that day 
that I should make sure I lock it so it was safe. That day, I went to a park and instead of locking my bike immediately, I first checked to see if anyone else had locked their bike. They hadn't. So I concluded that it wasn't a big deal and my dad's advice had been unnecessary. As you can probably guess, my bike got stolen and I had to make the walk of shame back to my house. When I got home, my dad saw me approaching the house so I couldn't even hide the reality of what had happened. He said to me, where is your bike? And I had to confess that it had been stolen. He asked me, did you lock it? I responded with a no. At this point, he could have easily said, I told you so. He had every right to do so. But instead, he spent time with me, seeing if there was anything we could do to get my bike back. We went back to the park to check if we could find it. We called the police. We did everything. Unfortunately, we didn't find the bike, but he showed me that he cared. It was only after we had finished searching that he sat me down and gave me the telling off I deserved. Then he eventually said, I told you so, and made it very clear that I should never do this again. If he had said, I told you so too early, I could have thought as a child that it was more important for my dad to be proven right than for him to show me that he cares. But instead, he demonstrated that he cared before he told me off, and I never forgot that. There will be times when you have told someone not to do something, and they will go ahead and do it against your advice and end up in difficulty. It might be your friends, your children, or even your spouse. If they call you for help, the last thing you want to say is I told you so. By saying I told you so, you literally are not doing anything to help the situation. Obviously, you tell them at some point, but that shouldn't be the first thing you decide to do. If you help them before you rebuke them, they will know that you genuinely care about their well-being more than you care about wanting to prove that you are right. I have given a couple of examples where this law is crucial, but there are so many more. Master the art of timing. The consequences of poor timing are endless. Missed opportunities, destroyed relationships, and unnecessary hardship. These are all consequences of poor timing. Before you act, don't just spend time thinking about how you are going to do something, but also spend significant time thinking about when you're going to do it. This could be the difference between failure and success. Law number 36 says, disdain the things you cannot have. Ignoring them is the best revenge. If you want something, you should chase it until you've got it. Don't give up. Don't yield and don't relent. This sounds like good advice and it's correct most of the time. But did you know that there are times when it's not good to chase everything you want? There are times when the best option is to let go and relinquish effort, especially when it's no longer worth doing the thing you wanted to do. There is great power in being able to dismiss things which are desirable. If you continually chase after things you cannot have, you will end up looking weak, desperate, and pathetic. Once upon a time, I was an avid gamer. This was in the days of PlayStation 2, which to this day remains the most legendary console ever made. After some time, the PlayStation 3 was released and all my friends had it. They would talk endlessly about the online gaming sessions they'd had the night before, and I would feel left out. I felt like I needed a PS3. Not having one was painful and it was slowly eroding away at my happiness. I would see them being advertised and my heart would literally sink. Other people started to notice and I could see that it was making some of them happy. I had another friend called Edward. He also did not have a console, but the thing about Edward was he didn't seem to care. At first, People tried to rub it in, but he gave no reaction whatsoever. He was completely unconcerned. Between me and Edward, who do you think displayed more power? Who do you think appeared more in control? Who do you think was more dignified? It was Edward. Of course it was Edward. He didn't care about the things he could not have, whereas I was languishing. Here is another example of this rule. 
Have you ever noticed that if you support a team and the team is performing badly, people will only mock you and rub it in if you show that you are deeply affected. But if you show that you're fine, regardless of what happens to your team, people will just leave you alone and let you enjoy your life. Let's face it, haters exist. Haters are people who delight when you are annoyed. They delight when you are frustrated and they delight when you are unhappy. They might intentionally say things to irritate you and annoy you simply because they want to see you lose. If you ignore them, they'll eventually stop because they will see that you are above it. But if you react, then they will have a field day. That is law number 34, 35 and 36 from the 48 laws of power. Join me next time for the next three laws. If you enjoyed this video, I'm certain that you will enjoy the other videos I've made on the 48 laws of power. You will find them all in this playlist. With that being said, thanks for watching and see you in the next video. And don't forget to like, comment and subscribe so that you can be alerted whenever I release a new video.